Um, but for me and my company, this is the type of product that we offer. It's simple, it's easy, it's quick, and I find that it looks pretty elegant and chic. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This video is all about making sew favors for weddings and events. And before I begin, I wanna thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a really cool online community built especially for small business owners, creators, and professionals who want to expand their current skills, passions, and interests, and also build new ones using Skillshare's thousands of online classes. Skillshare will help you build the skills you need to attract customers and improve your social media platforms, like with this photography class by Tabitha Park on taking artistic photos using everyday objects. This class taught me so much about how to make interesting and beautiful flat lays with just using the stuff I have at home. She also talks about how to edit those photos in Lightroom and Photoshop, which I think as a small business owner is a crucial skill in giving your photos that professional touch. None of the classes are interrupted by ads and there's always new premium classes being launched. So there's always a new skill that's ready for you to be learned. And like most business owners, you're probably on a budget. Don't worry, I got you the first 1,000 people that sign up to Skillshare using the link that I have down below. Get one month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. So don't wait, take advantage of this amazing offer by Skillshare and take your business to that next level today. Thank you again to Skillshare so much for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to making soap favors. I love making soap favors for customers. I love being a part of people's special day. And since I started this company, from the very get-go, I told people that I wanted to make soap favors for their events. And that's how I recommend you guys get started. Because when you first launch your business, you don't have that local customer base, you don't have many people that know about your company, so the first thing that you would probably do is tell your friends and family that you have this new soap business. And most people have events going on that could use soap favors as their parting gift to their guests, happening all the time, whether it's birthdays or weddings or anniversaries. All of these are opportunities for you to reach out to a family member or friend to let them know that you can offer your soaps as the parting favor that they can give to their guests. And this is exactly how I started. My sister's daughter was having her first birthday party and I offered to create little soap favors as the parting gift that she can give to her guests. And when it comes to that very first customer, you definitely wanna use a soap recipe that's reliable, that you've made multiple times before. You wanna use fragrance oils that you know will behave because all of these requests will come with deadlines and if you're unable to meet that deadline because the soap batch that you were creating for that customer fails or if something goes wrong, there's a lot at stake. So definitely only offer soap favors and recipes that you know will behave and fragrance oils that you're familiar with. And in addition to that, you don't wanna give your prospective customers too much choice. Decide beforehand what colors you're going to offer and what scents and make sure that's a very limited selection. Maybe max three of each color or each scent that the customer can choose from. And the reason why I say that is if you give your customer too much leeway, they might run away with it. They might want very particular scents. They might want very particular colors. And the more freedom you give to your customer, the more custom that customer tends to want to make that so favor. So keep it very limited and only offer what you know you can deliver um, consistently and perfectly. And when it comes to charging for your very first customer, you can offer to do it for free. I actually did offer to do it for free for my sister as the gift that I was gonna give to my niece was those so favors. But even though that's what I did, I actually would encourage you guys to charge a small fee because you really don't wanna give friends and family into the habit of expecting free product from you. So even if it's just a dollar a soap or $2 a soap, make sure that you're making it worth it for you and that you're getting something out of it. And for those people that wanna offer the service right away, but they don't have friends and family that have events that you can create soap favors for, 
There's no shame in faking it. And even though I did so favors for my sister and other friends, when I wanted to advertise this service to my social media, I went ahead and made demo or dummy so favor products that I took pictures of and staged and posted on my social media to show people what I can do when it came to this particular service. And for these dummy or demo soap favors, I also had them on my farmer's market table so that people who bought from me saw these favors on my table and right away knew that this is something that I can do for them and for their parties. And that's actually how I got a few customers. And when it comes to the soap favor itself, I would recommend keeping it small. For me, I offer, if you hear sounds in the background, that's Gibson playing with a bone. So I apologize if you hear some thudding and rumbling in the background. Um, but when it comes to the actual sew favor size itself, definitely keep it small. I like to have my sew favors be about 1.5 ounces. And what that is, is one of my square shaped bars cut into four pieces. I think this is the perfect soap favor size. And when it comes to actually making the soaps themselves, I like to use my square original soap loaf mold because I can easily cut them down to the sizes that I want. So this is what I mean when I talk about the square soap loaf molds. I really like it because the soap bar that it gives, I can easily cut into four equal pieces. And I'll show you what a soap favor size looks like in just a minute. So these are the bars all cut. And now what I'm going to do is to take a single bar and cut this in half lengthwise and then again um, across the middle. And that's where a single bar cutter comes in handy because you can really customize the sizes that you want for each soap. And I'll show you how I cut this right now. So for this particular soap cutter, I'm not sure where Kale got it from, <laughs> but I can adjust the size of what I want cut by moving this platform back and forth. So what I'll do is I'll just remove this part. And then I have my I have my soap over here that I'm going to be cutting first lengthwise and I try to kind of eyeball it, make sure that it's right in the middle. And I've cut that right in the middle like that and now I'm going to cut it again down the middle here, right in the middle of the soap bar give you guys a better angle here. And there you go. And now I have four soap favor pieces that are about 1.5 or one ounce in weight. And they are just the perfect size that guests can bring home to celebrate an event. And I will say having a blue soap is great. Blue is very popular for weddings. And my Jordan Bay soap um, is a popular choice for, for brides to have for their wedding day. Isn't that beautiful? Packaging soap favors. I like to keep the design pretty simple. I know if you look on Pinterest, you can see the elaborate things that people have done, the beautiful things people have done when it comes to packaging soap wedding favors. Like you'll see a lot of burlap used or sprigs of flowers used. Using paper sleeves is really popular as well. But for me, I like to package my wedding favor, party favor soaps the same way I package my commercial soaps. And that's using a shrink wrap from the National Shrink Wrap System. And then I use a clear label on the front and back of it. The front will have um, certain information and then the back will have the ingredients and my company information. And the reason why I opt to do that is because it's just easier at the end of the day. Remember that the more you add to soap favor packaging, that's more expense for you and it's more timely for you. And just think about that when you're expected to make 50 to 100 of these guys, it's pretty time consuming. So I like to keep these projects as in alignment with the rest of my other processes as possible. So here are some already cured soaps, scented in cucumber melon, that we've already made for a wedding that um, is coming up in August. And you can see how they're just the perfect soap favor size. I really, really enjoy making soap favors for events. I love being a part of people's special day. So I'm gonna show you with these guys how I wrap and then label them.
So I have these wrapped wedding favor soaps and the system that I use is the National Shrink Wrap system. I'll link it down below. Um, but yeah, the soaps are protected with the wrap and now all I need to do is stick a label on either side and I'll show you what that looks like in just a bit. And when it comes to the actual information on the soap favor itself, I think it's important to note that you still have to adhere to the labeling laws of a cosmetic product for whatever country, state, province you are in. So for me, being in Canada, I have to put the weight of the product in the front label. I have to list the ingredients all in the back. If you want more information on cosmetic labeling laws for Canada, you can click on this video up here. So take that into account for your soap label designs. So I made some dummy labels. This is not um, my actual customer's name. This is actually um, just saying Kale and me because this is just for the purpose of the video. But what I will do is I'll print them out on the labels. And I used to have a 1.5 by one inch label, which was perfect for this size of soap, but I stopped ordering it and I had to make do with these 1.8 by 1.8 square labels. Um, but what I will do is just cut this down to size and I will show you what they look like on the actual soap. And when it comes to the actual design, you see I have the date, I have the celebrants' names, I have the two laurel leaves on the side, the scent of the soap, and the what the product actually is in both English and in French. Yeah, I just like to keep it simple. Of course, you can dress it up and make it more special looking by adding burlap. You can add a sprig of flowers and, you know, the paper cardboard sleeves that is super popular to make it look very rustic. Um, but for me and my company, this is the type of product that we offer. It's simple, it's easy, it's quick, and I find that it looks pretty elegant and chic. But if you do decide to go that route and to make it um, look even fancier by adding all that stuff, uh, do yourself a favor and charge accordingly because that's, that's extra time and materials on your end that you have to account for. And just make sure that the customer is paying for that because all of that is worth a lot. Now, pricing your soap favors. When it comes to actually pricing these soap favors, even though it is a small product and you're making it in bulk, that doesn't necessarily mean you should be charging wholesale prices or even giving the customer a huge discount. Making these soap favors is still a lot of work and on top of that, it is a custom product that you're making especially for that customer. So you really need to factor in your time and skills when you are thinking about what to charge your customer. It's really important to understand that you shouldn't just be making a profit, but you need to make it worth it for you. And on that note, be really firm about your price. Don't worry or be sad when a customer walks away from your price and don't entertain a customer who tries to haggle with you. If a customer wants to haggle with you on the price that you quoted for them, that's sometimes an indicator that that customer may be difficult or really particular and demanding when it comes to working with them. So on that note, choose your customers wisely and make sure they understand the value of the skill and product that you are making. And once the product is made, definitely take pictures of the finished product and post those pictures on your social media. If you're unable to use a DSLR to create beautiful pictures, then you can also use an iPhone and there are tons of classes, also on Skillshare, that you can take that show you how to use an iPhone to create gorgeous product photography. Posting these pictures of your soap favors on social media works the same way as putting your demo soaps on a farmer's market table. They let people know that you offer this service and this is an example of what you can do. Not only will people see that and keep you in mind for their event, but they may tell others that they know someone who is able to do that for them for their party or event. If you need ideas on how to take the photos that will attract brides and possible customers, then you can go check out Pinterest. There are tons of ideas on how to stage the photo so that it gives off a party feel or a wedding vibe. Typically, soap favor photos are bright and airy, and I highly recommend you put a group of them together and stage it in the way that you would want the host to display it at their party or event. And that really gets people's interest going when it comes to them seeing that favor being displayed for their own party or event. 
And something that I'm just thinking about now, if you are going to be offering soul favors for an event, make sure you're giving yourself the adequate lead time to do it. Because remember with CP soap, cold process soap, you need at least a month's cure in order for that soap to be the best soap it could be. And when it comes to providing favors for an event, you are giving your products to a lot of people and you really wanna make sure you're presenting the best possible product that you can to these people. So I recommend uh, when you are giving estimates to your customer, at least give yourself a month. More than a month is, is for sure ideal, a month and a half so that you have time to make this product and schedule it in with all of your other projects and all of the other items that you have to make for your retail stores and for your other wholesale customers. Just make sure that you're giving yourself adequate time because when it comes to events and weddings, those deadlines are set and there's not a lot of wiggle room when it comes to that. So I think that's all I have to say about party favors. I do want to take this time to thank my patrons who have supported me on Patreon, especially my Bubble BFF. A lot of them are business owners themselves. You can check out their businesses in the description down below. And if you want to join the community, there's a tier where you can check out all of my recipes and all of the behind the scenes stuff on how I run my business, stuff that I don't share on YouTube or Instagram or anywhere else. So if you want to check that out, the link is down below. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you like to offer soap favors as wedding favors or party favors. Why or why not you think a product like this is a good thing to offer for a soap business. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. And until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome, keep making gorgeous, beautiful things, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.